So this is my brand new Xtool P2 that just arrived and I just started using to create some fun projects. I already had the Xtool M1 and the biggest difference is size. And I'm gonna show you the comparison. You're gonna have to ignore the mess that is my current garage because I ordered actually a big long table to be able to, to put both of my machines on, but I really did not expect the size. Like I knew how big the, the P2 was and how much it was gonna be able to do because of its size, but I didn't realize with the riser base, especially just how tall it was gonna be. And so I actually have to now order something new because I am so vertically challenged that I was unable to see inside of the machine. So the big difference with the Xtool P2 compared to the M1 is that it is really made for somebody who is looking to create a small business. Don't get me wrong, I love the M1. The M1 has been absolutely amazing, but it is more for your entry level small businesses or your hobby crafters. Because as you can see, here is my Xtool P2. You can see how big it is. And over there, that is the M1. <laughs> you could probably fit two of those within the P2. So the bed is much larger, so which means you can do much bigger projects. Plus it has a conveyor, so that way you can do those extra long projects that you could never do with your M1. So here's the example, so here's our Xtool P2, and then over there is my M1. So you can see the difference in the size. So your Xtool P2 is really going to be more for your small business owners because your output is going to be so much more than the Xtool M1, especially when it comes to speed. And again, I am not saying that the Xtool M1 is not a great machine because it really is. It is the absolute most perfect machine for those of you who are looking just to craft or for those of you that are looking to start out a small business and don't have the money to purchase the P2. It's a really great introductory machine, but if you want to be able to really produce a lot of material really fast, you're going to want the P2, especially because it can do that clear acrylic that the M1 cannot do. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you a couple example projects that I just did today just to start out. And then in the upcoming months, I'm gonna have some more projects that you can do with the P2 using it with the idea that you're going to be creating a small business. So the very first project I'm gonna be doing, I'm just going to do a test cut and test engrave using a scrap piece of wood that I have laying around from making uh, little name cards for Thanksgiving. So I've got it in my honeycomb in my machine and I have it with some clips all set up, ready to go. That's okay if you don't have the honeycomb, the slats will work too. So I just type the word hello and I'm gonna go ahead and just do a test cut and a test engrave. So I'm going to hit the process button and then I will click start. And then I will walk over to the machine and show you how you have to push the blue glowing button to get your machine to start. And so here's just a quick clip of it engraving and cutting. Okay, so here is what the finished product looks like. I just did, again, it was just a piece of scrap. So there is a little bit of charring here on the bottom, more so than on the front. And I probably would have wanted it to go a little bit darker, but overall, for a first cut using the settings that Xtool provided to me, I think this is a really good first start. And I honestly cannot believe how much faster this machine is than the M1. For my first actual project, I'm going to be creating a pencil jig. Pencil jigs are a really great idea if you are a first time business owner and you're looking for something that would be easy to create with your laser that you could easily sell during, you could do it during the beginning of the school year, you can do it at Christmas time, you can do it during teacher appreciation week, you can do it for the end of school. There are so many different times that you can sell personalized pencils. And so I'm just gonna show you a really simple project that believe it or not, you can get this jig for free online through the Xtool Creative Space website for their project ideas, and I'm gonna show you how to download that. Your first step is to put your basswood or whatever type of wood you will be using onto either your slats or your honeycomb in your machine, and make sure it's secure with the clips. 
Now to get the pencil jig, you're gonna to need to go to the Xtool Projects website. And this is where you can get a bunch of free Xtool Creative Space files that people have uploaded. And it truly is amazing because now for some of them, obviously you're not gonna be able to sell the files because they aren't meant for commercial use. But something like a pencil jig, you aren't going to be selling the pencil jig. You're going to be using it to create your own product. And so this is the perfect thing to download as an easy first project if you are starting out a laser business. Here are some other examples of projects like look how cute this little snow globe ornament is or you can get the material test grid which is really important. But now we're gonna go ahead and get the pencil jig. As you can see over on the left hand side is where you're going to click to download the files. You're either going to click open in the creative space software or you're going to just click the download button. I've already downloaded that so I'm just gonna go ahead and show you what it looks like once I put it into the program. Okay, so I've opened the file in my Xtool Creative Space software. I'm going to go ahead and select the pencil jig and just move it over. I did had to refresh and get a screen capture to make sure I have my most current screen. But as you can see, the jig is too big for the piece of basswood that I'm using and that's okay. What I'm gonna do is just kind of center it the best that I can and then I'm gonna just erase the pencils that I don't need. So yeah, I won't be able to do as many pencils as the person who created this file was able to do, but that's okay. I wanna just work with the wood that I already have on hand. But if you're doing this, just make sure you get a bigger piece of wood and then you'll be able to get even more pencils than what I'm gonna be able to create. I'm just gonna erase all these little things that are off of my board to make sure that they, of course, don't go over top of my clips because I don't want that to happen. And I'm just gonna make sure that everything else looks like it's good to go. Okay, now that my file looks pretty good to go, I'm gonna click off of it, and then I'm gonna go over here on the right-hand side and make sure I change my settings for my material. So I'm gonna be using basswood, and you can see over on the right I have the basswood selected, but I do need to go ahead and measure the thickness just because I'm using the honeycomb, and I always just measure as a precaution to make sure that's correct. So I've got my three millimeter basswood selected. Then I'm going to click this to do my thickness. And what's really nice about this file is it actually has right here, it tells you to click on this to be able to do your measurements. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna click on that and it's gonna auto measure. And then of course it will adjust slightly and then I will probably have to move around my jig just a little bit more. Okay, the auto measure has succeeded and it barely actually changed it. So I actually don't think I really need to move anything. So. I'm gonna go ahead and now and do my settings. So I'm gonna click on my red settings, which is my cutout. This is gonna be everything that we'll be cutting. I'm gonna select cut, and I'm gonna just go with the Xtool reference because that has worked really well for me so far in my settings. Make sure that your settings work for you. But for me, it's gonna be 100% power, 30% or 30 millimeter per second speed, and one pass. Then I'm gonna do my framing which is just gonna be a score. And again, I'm gonna use the reference that goes with my machine. I'm gonna get rid of this center score here, this pencil, because I'm actually not sure what this one is for. And you know what, there probably is a purpose to it, and I'm not sure what it is, but I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. Again, for my scoring lines, I'm just going to do the standard setting that comes with the machine and that is 12% power and 160 millimeters per second. Now, believe it or not, we're actually already ready to begin. So we're gonna, in the bottom right-hand corner, click the process button. This is gonna bring up a preview of what is going to cut and score. And then once we know that it looks right, we're going to click the start button in the upper right-hand corner. And then of course, with all machines, then you have to actually go over to your machine and make sure you actually hit the start button there. So the machine is closed and ready. I'm going to click the blue glowing button to start my machine. And then I'm going to show you just a little bit of the cutting and the scoring, but I'm gonna speed it up because if you were to sit here and watch this whole thing, it would get to be pretty boring. Okay, so this is what our finished pencil jig looks like inside of the machine. I will, of course, have to remove the little pieces of wood. And then I'm gonna show you what it looks like to engrave some pencils. The project took about seven minutes and 16 seconds, which honestly isn't bad for all of the cutting that it had to do. 
Okay, so I've set some pencils up in my jig to engrave and it says to align them on the right hand side, but I will tell you that I've done this now a couple times since then and I've actually found it works better to go to the left hand side. I only engrave on Ticonderogas because they are the world's best pencil and that is completely true and that is coming from a former teacher. It's all I use in my house. I decided for my first test, I'm actually not going to even take the clips off and pull up my pencil jig. I'm just gonna leave it there. So what I'm going to do is erase all of this things that I don't want it to do this next time and I don't want it to be cutting my over top of my pencils or anything like that. So I'm just gonna make sure that I clear all that. Um, I did go ahead in the right upper hand side, I clicked the refresh button so that now you can see what it looks like with my pencils inside. I'm going to have to adjust a few because I can see already that I can see the Ticonderoga logo, which I don't want to be able to see. It does distort it some, I've learned. So it it's, a, it's going to definitely be a little bit tricky to learn where your pencils are or exactly which way they're turned. So that's why it's going to be really, really extra important that you are using this jig. Okay, so I fixed the one pencil and it's going to refresh and it's going to show you now you won't no longer see that logo. And now I'm ready to place all of my names. I'm just going to use the name of a teacher that I know, Mrs. Brenner, and I'm going to go ahead and type it over here on the right hand side and I'm going to change down the size because obviously it's going to have to be a lot smaller. And then I'm just going to pick a font. I'm going to oh, make sure I select engrave first just because I want to be able to see what it looks like. Really quick, I'm gonna go ahead and do my settings. So I make sure I clicked off the name and I'm going to go ahead and put in my own settings. But first I'm going to do a measurement test and I'm just gonna kind of pick the middle top of a pencil. So I'm gonna let it, let it process and try to do the thickness. Okay, so now I'm going to click on the name and I'm going to move it over top of a pencil. I'm just going to shrink it down and see what the placement looks like. I'm going to get rid of these cut lines because I actually forgot to do that. And now I'm going to zoom in to make it a little bit easier to place the name. And then I will shrink it down and then move it over. So I'm ready to copy and paste my name, but before I do that, I'm gonna do my settings. So I'm gonna go over here and click engrave. I'm gonna do a power of 15%. I'm gonna do a speed of 200, and then I'm gonna just do one pass. So I'm gonna go ahead now, and I'm going to copy and paste the names along all of my pencils. And I'm not gonna show you that entire process because, well, that would be pretty boring, but I'm just gonna place them the best that I can, and then I will come back and show you the next step. Okay, so I'm just finishing up now, and then when I'm all done, I'm gonna click the right green button in the bottom right-hand corner that says process to go ahead and start my engraving. So my pencils are ready to be engraved, so I'm gonna go ahead and press my start button on my machine, and it's going to begin the engraving process. The jig just helps the pencils from rolling around and it really, I cannot believe how fast this is. So this would be a really quick and easy project to do, again, if you're gonna be selling because this wouldn't take you very long. You could have your jig set up. You wouldn't even have to move it. All you'd have to do is take the pencils in and out and the placement would be much easier if you don't move the jig. So this would be a great project for somebody who is starting out as a first time small business owner of a laser machine. And here is an example of some of what the pencils look like finished. I started to take them out before I realized I didn't take a video or picture to show you, but here's the finished pencils.